All right, this is Pete over DIY Auto School, and what we got, we got us a product that we're going to try out over here. It's called Roberlo. Um, this has been around a long, long time, and it's a 150. This is what we got going here: the Superior 150 High Solids, two to one High Solid Clear Coat. That means that you got your clear and you got your hardener. Now, this is a universal hardener on this that is designed to use in all weathers. Most of the time when you use a clear, and if you look right here, that says premium hardener slow. All right, there's several different harders, hardeners that you would use with the clear depending on the weather. But with the Roberlo, from what I understand and the research that I've done, you only use this hardener no matter what the weather is. That means if it's freezing ass cold, you ain't gonna paint. You're gonna have to wait till it warms up, Minnie. Okay. And another thing about this clear is that this stuff is like syrup. Now this is the research I've done. I've never used it. We're going to go ahead and take a chance in using it. And you're supposed to reduce this clear. Once it's all mixed up, you reduce the clear 10 to 25% with reducer. Now another thing about their reducer is they don't have speeds. This is just your basic standard this is standard so I guess that would be for normal temperature normal usage type stuff and that's what we're going to use so I normally use the matrix MS 52 this is the clear that I use okay and it works out very very nice I like it um, I've been using that for years let's walk in here you can see this GTO was painted with it uh, it's an awesome clear it works great Okay, and that's the, usually the clear that I use. But I'm moving to Moab, Utah, and we can't find any Matrix products. So I'm going to have to change lines of paint suppliers to get what I want. And I don't like House of Color. I don't like Valspar. I love PPG, but it's exhaustingly expensive. And what I do with customers, when I paint their cars, I give them two options. We can do it with this clear here, go down the road, or we can go with the Concept 2021 or 2020, and it's going to cost you more money because this is three to four times more expensive. So nine out of ten people go with the Matrix. That's why I use Matrix. I try to save people money. I don't like to take a high price clear such as a PPG and throw it on the customer when they're already spending $30,000. Now, this setup clear that you're looking at right here, this Roberlo, this was $125 for this two gallon setup. That's right, there's two gallons here and then of course we got our reducer. Now, I was told that you don't have to use this reducer. Um, the sales guy gave it to me. I didn't pay for it. You can use any type of urethane reducer you want. You can't use acetone. You can't use paint thinner. You can't use mineral spirits. It has to be urethane reducer. So we're going to go ahead and mix this up. And we're going to go ahead and clear coat this 1964 Volkswagen Beetle. Now we've got PPG paint on it. We didn't paint this from wet sand to this. You can go back into the videos and see what we've done to this car if you want. But this is not about this car. This is about using the Robolio Clear. So let me go ahead and get the car prepped up. I got a few things to do on it. We're going to go through the procedure of how this is mixed and how you're supposed to mix it. It's a two to one mix with 10 to 25 percent reducer depending on what kind of spray gun you use. Okay, this versus this versus that. All right. And then my friend Pete is going to be the judge, jury, and conviction if this stuff's any good. One thing I did here and researched about, you cannot color sand and buff this for approximately three to four days. The longer you let this sit, and I'm going to tell you the reason why, is because this is designed to dry slow. When you use a clear like this, or other clears that are on the market that are designed to dry fast, what happens? Shrinkage. And that's the way these clears are designed. 
All right, this is a European style clear that is designed to dry slow. If you try to buff this out the next day and you touch it like that and bring your fingers up, there's going to be fingerprints in it, just like the uh, PPG, the 2021. It's the same stuff. This type of clear, you got to let it dry three to four days. It's very important if you use this clear, it has to be in a clean environment, such as, once again, my paint booth where it'll be able to sit and dry. Let me go ahead and get everything prepped up. We're gonna come back and uh, see if this stuff actually does something. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and mix our Roberlo up. Um, like I said, this is the first time I've ever used this clear and hopefully it will work out. Um, I have done my research on it. It seems like it's gonna be a nice clear to use. But uh, we'll see. So I got my clear, and I'm going to go ahead and mix it two to one. I've already marked my cup down here. Uh, I went to the two, two to one point five to one. Uh, so we're basically going to fill it up to approximately right here, just a little bit above half, and then the rest of it will be our hardener. And we are going to add 10% reducer. Since I got this reducer here with the kit, I'm going to go ahead and use everything Roberlo. So we'll go ahead and pour our reducer in first. Let's go ahead and get that open. And once again, you don't have to use their reducer. Okay, you don't have to use their reducer with their clear. You can use any urethane reducer that you want. Just make sure that you're using quote unquote reducer, not thinner. Um, when I lift the can up, it's very heavy. But we are dealing with a gallon and a half here, but it's still heavy. Let's see what it looks like as we pour it out and see if it's a crystal clear type substance that we're working with. And as I'm looking at it, it is pouring out to be a clear type clear. Some trash got in my cup here uh, so I'm gonna have to strain that into another cup because I don't want no trash. I don't know what that is that got in there but we'll go ahead and restrain that to use it. And it does look to be a crystal clear clear. Uh, some of these high high-end clears or should I say high solace clears they kind of have a yellowish tint to them and I don't like that. That's another reason I don't like high solids is because most of them will have this um, will have this tint to it. And I don't like to use clear. Damn, I hate them kind of cans. I don't like to use clear that has a tint to it. So we'll go ahead and add our hardener. And I can see that this is pretty thick, so. Now, I will say that this mixes up to be two gallons of sprayable clear when you're all done. And I gotta mix up another quart. I need two quarts of that. So we're gonna go ahead and mix two quarts while we're doing this. And I don't know if you saw that or not, but that's why it's real important to uh, use a strainer. All it takes is a minute little piece of trash to get inside your clear and it can ruin the whole paint job. The smell of this is not strong. Um, it's a very mild smell. It's not thick or uh, disturbing in any way. Okay. And the fragrance of it doesn't really make you hack or cough. And once again, it doesn't really have a strong aroma, you might say. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you get these products such as our base coat paint and the aroma is so strong that you gotta be wearing your paint mask to really actually mess with it, which I should be doing now. And normally I will have my mask on, but I'm trying to do a review on this so we're not using our mask at this time. So as I'm stirring it up and mixing my content, I'm looking at it to make sure that it still stays to be a color consistent, clear, accurate clearness to it. And you can see 
that it is almost and is not almost but it is as clear as a glass of water and that's what you want you want a nice clear uh, looking type clear you don't want a clear that has a yellowish tint to it anyway whatsoever I also noticed that when it runs off the stick here that it has a nice consistency it's not running off too fast it's not running off too slow and it looks like it is a very very thick clear look at the stick most clears when you put the stick in there and pull it out uh, the stick will absorb it but you can see that this clear is a very thick high solid clear and it's staying on the stick without absorbing into it and actually looks pretty good okay so good so far I like what I'm seeing here um, once again this is a high solids clear and you gotta take your time with high solids the first coat that I put on it is not going to be a full coat it's going to be a very what can we say medium speeds uh, tack coat and that's important when you're using a high solids clear that you put the first coat will be a tack coat uh, and then that what that'll do that will um, help uh, prevent runs in the clear when you put your full coats on so it says three coats but one coats actually a tack coat so you're really only going to be putting two coat, two full wet coats and a tack coat if you want to look at it that way. We're going to go ahead and take our strainer. We're going to go ahead and put it in our gun. And what I'm using is a siphon gun. That's what I was uh, taught on. That's what I use 95% of the time. I do have HBLP SATA guns, but I prefer to use the uh, siphon gun. Some people will argue with me and say that siphon guns suck, um, but these are people that have never used them and have grown up with HVLP guns. And if you grew up using a Binks number no. 7, you would agree with me that for a universal overall paint and body spray gun, the number no. 7 is the best. Let's get in the paint booth and let's get some clear on this car. tack coat but with this clear you can't put a tack coat because it is it goes on so thick that it has to be a full coat so you got to put a full coat on it I don't know if you saw the way I was spraying in there but I was going pretty quick at it um, and another thing that I found out about this clear is because it's so thick you have to bump your air pressure up approximately 10 to 15 pounds more pressure to get it to flow properly that's another important thing so we're not going to look at it tonight we're going to look at it tomorrow uh, we can look inside the window over here at the clear the sheen is actually very thick and and uh, what can we say I don't know it's uh, really shiny. shiny so we'll look at that thing tomorrow we won't look at it today and hopefully um, it won't shrink down as bad as other clears that I've used and it will color sand a buff out 
well, but we'll find that out later. The referral clear actually feels and flows and sprays like it might be a good clear, but the real truth to the whole matter is going to be the color sand and buffing. Is it going to color sand and buff like a rock, or is it going to color sand and buff like butter? We'll find out when we come back. Okay, the car's been sitting approximately, what, two and a half, three weeks? Yes. You can see it's still in the exact place. I'm actually putting it back together. And the reason I'm putting it together in here is to show everybody out there that this car has never been buffed. Um, the Rioglo, what is it called, the Burlo Clear is one of the best clears I've ever used. They're not paying me to do this, by the way. No. Nobody gave me a free gallon of clear. No. Nobody's supplying me. I didn't call them up and say, hey, I got a YouTube channel. Give me some clear coat and I'll paint a car with it. And, 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 you know, I didn't do all that. I don't believe in that shit. If I review a product and it's a bad product, what do I do? State that it's a bad product. I say it's a bad product. I get hundreds and hundreds of emails every month. People want to send me their bullshit products off this fucking Amazon. All right, let me tell you about Amazon. Can I go ahead and say it? Amazon is nothing but a fucking online flea market. 99% of the stuff you get on there is junk. Made in China, made in Taiwan, made in Honduras, made in Mexico, and everywhere else in the world, and it's pure fucking junk. It's a gimmick fucking operation there. All right, if you're not gonna buy a main brand on Amazon, stay away from it, because 75% of it's junk. Trash. So, back to the Roberto. Come on over here. Um, we're going to have to spot buff this. The reason is, if we look right here, I got a little run in it. Alright. The deck lid looks a little rough. We're probably going to buff that out. We got a sag right here. If many can kind of get down and see that sag, so I'll get that out. But overall, 99.9% .9 of the cars, when you can walk with me, you can see. Okay, what happened now? I hit, I hit that. I, did, I was watching the screen. I'm camera girl, and then I hit my head well, on Don't my hit car. your head, camera girl. Yeah, yeah. So, 99% uh, of this car came out awesome. And this is, I will tell you now, this clear, if you put it on right and you reduce it, by 10% with urethane reducer, this could be possibly the clear you're looking for because this is a non-buff clear. Yeah, it can't take No shrink back. There's no shrink back. The only uh, problem issue that is on it is from first time use. I got a couple sags in it. I got a couple dry spots that we got to buff out. But other than that, you know, this stuff is awesome. Uh, I was told if you're going to color sand and buff this paint, you got to wait for four days for it to dry in a clean environment. Now, it does dry to the touch, okay, in 12 hours or whatever. But if you're going to dry, if you're going to buff the car, um, I was told by other professionals, you got to wait up to four days, possibly longer than that. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Paying cars, using new products, telling you the truth of what the heck's going on over here. Is it junk? Is it good? Is it not? Is it yes? This is a yes. This is good. Roberto, come on over here. Let's look at the can. I can't, uh, I can't uh, verify or comment on any of their other products except for the seam sealer. And that's where I picked this up. I, I went and uh, got some seam sealer and used it, and it turned out to be awesome. But this is the clear that I'm using. I'm probably going to stick with this clear when I move to Moab, Utah. And uh, this is our reducer, all right? 
Now you can you don't have to use their reducer. You can use any reducer as long as it's a urethane base reducer, base coat reducer. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, doing reviews. Um, check out the Roberlo product line. Uh, it says right here, 50th anniversary. They started in 68, 2018, so they've been in business 52 years. This isn't just some company that opened the doors yesterday. I don't know where it's made. I don't know who owns it, this, that, and the other. But I do know that this clear right here is a good, solid, high solid, superior clear that we're going to be using in my shop called Southwest Rod and Custom and DIY Auto School. Take it easy and uh, I hope you liked this little review and believe me when I tell you this is a good product because the only reviews I do are true factual reviews. If it's a piece of shit I will tell you it is a piece of shit. I gotta go. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.